Hi, my name is Jung Young Kim. I am a master's student at Ina University. Today, I will be presenting our work, Split and Bridge, Adaptive Class Incremental Learning Within a Single Neural Network. Let's get started. As you probably know, continual learning is a very important problem in neural networks, which is getting a lot of attention these days. Continual learning is a method of gradually advancing knowledge while learning about sequentially arriving tasks like the human brain. As you can see below, the network learns about some task in time step t minus 1. And then if a new task arrives at the time step t, it will learn additional knowledge based on the existing knowledge. The real goal of continual learning is to run a series of continuously arriving tasks, as well as not to forget the previous knowledge. Among a few different problem settings in continual learning, in this paper, we focus on the problem setting called class incremental learning. In class incremental learning, we need to run each task each sample belongs to as well as which class it belongs to. Because we have to maintain a single unified classifier within a network. So the goal of class incremental learning is to run samples of new classes without forgetting the knowledge about all the previous classes. Unfortunately, this is not easy at all in neural network. In neural networks, we can easily lose the previous knowledge, and this problem is usually called catastrophe forgetting in, in the literature. More specifically, when a new task comes in, we should learn new knowledge about this new task. However, at this time, this learning of new knowledge can make the network to forget the previously learned knowledge which can drastically drop the overall accuracy over all the classes. In order to mitigate this catastrophe forgetting problem, many works have been studied. Among them, one of the most common strategies is what we call standard KD method. In the standard KD method, there are two components. The first component is rehearsal method. It is the way of storing a small subset of previous samples and training them together with samples for a new task. And knowledge distillation method is the second component. It tries to mitigate forgetting by transferring the previous knowledge distilled from the pre-trained model. It learns previously previous knowledge by trying to make the subtle probabilities of the new task to be the same as those of the pre-trained model. So far, what I have explained is about the previous, previous work on class incremental learning. From now on, I'm going to get down to our analysis on class incremental learning and our meteor. Our first observation is that there are three knowledge types as follows to achieve the ultimate goal of class incremental learning. First, intra-old knowledge is the knowledge for discriminating all the samples of old classes that have been previously learned until the time step t-1. When a new task comes in at the time step t, we have to run intra-new knowledge which is the knowledge that discriminate new samples only within a new task. And at the same time, we also have to acquire the cross-task knowledge. It is the knowledge that distinguishes each new sample from all the previous samples. In other words, this is the knowledge that lies between the old task and the new task. When each of these three knowledge types is effectively learned in a balanced manner, we can reach to the goal of class incremental learning. If you look back on standard KD method from the perspective of three types of knowledge we mentioned in the previous slide, 
Intro old knowledge is mainly learned through distillation laws with new samples together with some of the previous samples. And additionally, through cross entropy laws using some of the previous samples. On the other hand, intra new knowledge and cross task knowledge are learned by only cross entropy laws using either new samples or both of old and new samples. In the standard KD method, we can see that different types of knowledge are obtained through different types of loss function. Our research's motivation is that due to the interference from distillation loss, KD-based methods suffer from learning intra-new and cross-task knowledge. This is intuitively because the distillation loss is not intended to newly learn additional information, but for the pre-trained network not to be changed that much. And a soft label used by the distillation loss carries a large amount of information than a one hard encoded class label in the cross entropy loss. And therefore, distillation loss will more strongly affect the final loss function than cross entropy loss. Because of this fact, distillation loss of the standard KD method will make the network more difficult to run the intra new and cross task knowledge because both of them can be acquired by a cross entropy loss like we have seen in the previous slide. Let's look at the result of a corresponding experiment. By using distillation loss, we can see that it is good at learning intra-old knowledge from the fact that old and intra-old accuracy become higher. When we use distillation loss together with cross entropy loss, but at the same time, we can see that performance for new knowledge get worse as its new and intra new accuracy become lower. In order to overcome this problem, we propose a two phase learning method called split and bridge that can effectively learn all the three types of knowledge without intervention from learning the others. To this end, we first partially split the network to run intra-old and intra-new knowledge in an isolated partition without any competition between losses. This is called split pane. And then in the bridge phase, it reconnects the partition network so that at this time cross-task knowledge can be run. More specifically, in the split phase, we partially separate the network into old partition and new partition to run different type of knowledge as independently as possible. Let's say we are learning a new task at the time step t on the current, current model theta t. This theta t is somehow partitioned into the following three partition, which are a shared partition theta s an old task partition theta O and a new task partition theta N. Given this partition network and previous sample MT and new samples DT. Intra old knowledge is run through distillation loss and intra new knowledge is run by localized cross entropy loss in an independent way on their own partition. Localized cross entropy loss is the loss defined by kind of a conditional softmax probability within new classes and one out included maybe. Then how do we actually split the network? Let's say we are given a layer L where we have the input nodes VL minus one and the output nodes VL and the weight parameter WL between them. In order to minimize the loss of information while splitting the network, we gradually remove interconnected rays between different partitions in the training process. The first step is to assign each node into either old partition or new partition like this example. 
the ratio between the size of these two partitions are properly determined in the training process. And we gradually make interconnected weight between different partitions pass using L2 regularization in the training process. After that, we remove the sparse interconnected weight explicitly. In situations where intra-old knowledge and intra-new knowledge has been learned over a partitioned network, in the bridge phase, we reconnect the removed interconnected weight to run the cross-task knowledge, and we connect it through zero-initialized weight to avoid cre cre creating um, erroneous value. Given this reconnected network and previous samples and new samples, cross-task knowledge is run to global cross-entropy loss. Global cross-entropy loss is the loss of defined by full softmax probability over old classes and new classes. Let's look at the example experiment. In our experiments, we train two benchmark data sets. Super 100 and tiny ImageNet on ResNet 18. And we randomly arrange and divide the classes into a particular number of groups of the samples same size for each group to be an incremental task. As a compared method, we test the following KD-based class incremental learning method, ICAR, WA, and BIC. All three methods basically adopt the standard KD-based training method, which we name STD. But they are different in their way of inference by having different form of classifier. In addition, we test another method, double distillation, which is the way of combining two neural networks separately trained for either the old task or new task. We can say that any inference technique are orthogonal to the training scheme. So we apply WA to double distillation as well as split and bridge. Through average accuracy of each method over all the incremental steps other than the first, we can see that split and bridge method outperform the other learning method in most of the accuracy. Especially our method performed better than double distillation with WA and standard KD method with WA. Let's take a look at the performance of each step of incremental learning. We can see that split and bridge consistently achieves the highest accuracy throughout the incremental step in both C400 and tiny ImageNet. And we also compare the intra-new accuracy and intra-old accuracy of each method on the average. In order to focus on the effectiveness of each training scheme, we conduct this analysis using only the method with WA. Through the result, we can see that split and bridge always show that shows the best intra-new accuracy in both datasets, which tells our separated learning training method is quite effective to run the intra-new knowledge. And another observation is that split and bridge method is not only highly adaptive to new classes, but also good at resolving the intra-old knowledge. In this paper, we can show that standard KD-based method has more focused on preserving the intra-old knowledge by sacrificing plasticity of a model. So we proposed a novel class incremental learning method called Split and Bridge, which is highly adaptive to new classes, yet stable enough not to forget too much of the pre previous knowledge. And through the extensive experiments, we confirmed that our method can be effective solution for stability plasticity dilemma. Thank you for listening. We write down contact information 
So if you have any question, you can get in touch with us. Additionally, we'll release the code on GitHub. Thank you.